start speaking first and then Matt's going to um, have a chat. Um, our journey started uh, over 20 years ago uh, and after seeing three specialists and being told to go home and find a hobby because we couldn't have any children, uh, we thought about <coughs> surrogacy. Uh, we contacted one of the clinics here in Australia um, who we knew had been dabbling in it and they really were not that interested even to talk to us at that stage because we didn't actually have our own surrogate mother. Uh, we saw a small ad in the paper and we went along to a seminar in Sydney uh, and that's where our um, surrogacy journey began. Uh, we worked with an overseas agency uh, in the States um, and the interesting thing on the day we went to the seminar in Sydney, there are actually 50 couples sitting in that room and that's uh, 17 years ago. So surrogacy is certainly not a new topic. I know there's been a lot of discussion in the media about it lately, um, but we have met a lot of Australian couples that have actually pursued their quest overseas. Um, the agency that we worked with in the States is one of the largest and had been in existence <coughs> for 32 years. Uh, we were initially um, quite fearful about working with uh, an organisation so far away, uh, but we did our own research uh, and uh, through a, different, a few different um, areas and found that they were an extremely reputable com uh, company and had over a thousand babies already had been born through their program. Um, we uh, retained them about six months after we actually went to the seminar. Uh, and then the process began in earnest. Um, we were given uh, a selection of surrogate mother um, profiles to have a look at. Uh, their surrogate mothers, for every 100 people, 100 women that apply in their program, they only actually take two. They have to go through very, very rigid selection processes. Um, and so by the time we actually got the profiles, we were extremely comfortable with what we were looking at. Um, we didn't actually take the first surrogate that we um, had been offered and spoken to. Um, you need to have a really, really good connection and it wasn't until we actually spoke to the, our third one. Um, and it was almost like we had known her for many, many years. She displayed wonderful characteristics that fitted into, the, I guess, the values that we were looking for. Someone who was empathetic, who was caring, who money was not the primary motivation because as um, everyone realises in, in the States it is commercial surrogacy. Um, we went to the States uh, about four months later and we actually met with um, Jeannie and her husband. Jeannie lives in um, Denver, Colorado and uh, she actually has a teenage daughter who now um, is 19 and in her first year of university. Um, we spent two weeks there. Um, we worked very closely with the counsellor um, who led us through the process of ensuring that it was a compatible match. And the surrogate mother in their program actually has the final say, which we were also very impressed with. It wasn't like that we were just told, this is who you're going to work with. Um, so we felt really comfortable in that respect. Um, Jeannie didn't get pregnant on her first cycle and she was extremely disappointed. And she couldn't understand that we weren't as disappointed, but I guess anyone that has gone through many, many years of um, disappointment, it was just another step in the process. Um, but she did get pregnant on her second um, cycle. Um, and throughout the journey of her pregnancy, she had a fairly textbook um, pregnancy. She was healthy. Um, she kept working. Um, we talked to her on a regular basis. Um, and remember, this is before emails and fa uh, emails and Skype and everything was in existence. So there was a lot of letter writing, a lot of faxes, and a lot of telephone calls. Um, we had planned to spend the last, well, I had planned to spend the last month with Jeannie in the States, but we actually got a phone call late one night to say that Jeannie had actually gone into labour. Uh, and we were still sitting in um, southern New South Wales. <laughs> um, so by the time we actually arrived in Denver, uh, Matthew was 24 hours old. What they um, hadn't told us that Matthew was actually quite sick. 
um, and nothing prepares you um, for uh, to walk in after sitting on an eight and hour flight for a baby that's hooked up to 50 different monitors and um, things so but anyway um, the next three weeks Matt stayed in hospital we actually stayed with Jeannie for two weeks she wouldn't have it any other way uh, and that's not normally what happens but we had discussed it with our agency and they felt that because our relationship was at the point that it was that there was nothing that was um, of concern. We live in a very, very small country town, so as you can imagine, we knew that it was going to um, become very public very quickly. Um, we had a bit of a strategy. We pulled five of our very close friends together and we told them, and there was one particular person in there who, as much as we love her, she's a bit of a chatterbox, and we knew <laughs> that by two days later that the whole town would know. <laughs> my, my biggest fear was that one after Matt was born, um, that I would walk into the supermarket with baby and uh, someone would go, where did that come from? So it was uh, really important um, to make sure that we got that message right. Um, we were overwhelmed by the positive comments um, that uh, came from our friends and family, um, even right through to the people that I worked with. My husband, is, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, is a is a very, very private person and in his eyes he just wanted to say, we don't need to tell anyone, we'll just deal with it. Um, but I knew that that was not the case. Um, in all the time, well Matt's now 15, I have only ever had one negative p comment and that was from a lady in a supermarket who I had never ever met before. Um, she was talking to another lady who was overjoyed at um, seeing Matt for the very first time. And she came up to me later and she said, I think what you've done is absolutely disgusting and uh, you know, you should be prosecuted, etc." The extremely funny thing is now is her grandson is the same age as Matt and plays in the same hockey team. <laughs> we have never talked about it since and I um, have no intention. The, the counsellor that we worked with suggested to us that it is best to actually tell your child right from the start. Um, so we practised our story. Um, so it was never anything unusual in our, in our house. Um, and I know Matt's going to touch on that briefly. The important part in, this, in, this, in the story was um, the relationship with our surrogate mother. We always wanted her to be part of our life. Um, not that we knew that we were going to see her every day, um, but we still keep in contact with her. Um, but our life has actually moved on um, from just Matthew. We, uh, we talk about different things that are happening. Her daughter's in university. Uh, we do um, correspond um, Christmas cards. We always send her flowers on Matt's birthday, which has been unusual. <laughs> not sending them to her on her birthday. So that's my, our life in a nutshell. So now I'm going to hand over to the most important person in our family, <laughs> who um, I'm not sure if he's going to read his notes or if he's just going to wing it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, Mum. You seem to have finished it for me. <laughs> well, as Mum told you, I'm, I'm Matt and I'm 15. And we grow, I grew up in a small country town in northern, southern New South Wales. Um, I'm in Year 9 at a school in Albury, and I was born through surrogacy. Um, well, Mum and Dad told me, as Mum said, ever since I was in a cot, and it's ever since I could understand, I did understand, and any questions that I asked, Mum and Dad answered as best they could. Um, and I've heard the broken tummy story many a time. Um, it often started with uh, need of a surrogate mother and um, bits and pieces about how they met and how I was born and I'm grateful that they did come together and have me. Um, I don't think my birth was really that unique. Um, I'm not really that special or different from any other kids in my class. My surrogate mother, Jeannie, in US, in, who lives in Denver, USA, with her husband Dave and her daughter Taylor, as mum pointed out. Um, since I was born, we visited them once, and we stayed there for a week. Um, Taylor and I got on really well, and we're now Facebook friends, mm -hmm. and we talk every now and then. But it's not sort of like a brother-sister relationship, it's more of a friend relationship. relationship. 
and uh, we hope to go back, back and visit them sometime in the near future. Uh, the topic of surrogacy does not really come up in my day-to-day -day life anymore. I don't really think about it. I'm just too busy with school, sporting, hockey, especially, and girlfriends. <laughs> and <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Know about that one. <laughs> um, I had have one negative experience with a kid that I went to school with, and he told me that my mum didn't want me, so she got rid of me, and I came home and talked to my parents about it, and they explained it to me, and that was probably when I got the full story, and really, we really sat down and had a big conversation. So the kid was a bit of a bully, so I just kind of left him alone. Um, for me, it's really important that I know my surrogate mother is, and the reasons why she carried, carried me for my mum and dad. It takes a special person for that to happen, and I'm forever grateful for that. Um, I know that as I would have got older, I would have wanted to find answers about who my surrogate mother was and the reasons why I was born, and I'm kind of glad that it was never a secret, that it was always came out, and um, everyone has a right to know who, that, who they are and where they came from. Um, I told my friends at school like the year six day and if anyone asks I'll just tell them and it's not really that in, that important to me like I don't really care if anyone knows it's just who I am and um, other than that it's not I don't really tell anyone at the conference though, I did get asked a question has surrogacy changed your life <laughs> 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 the answer I gave was, surrogacy hasn't changed my life, it gave my life. <laughs> Other than that, no, surrogacy is just how I was born. The, the path my life is will take, will determine by a lot of things. My parents, my family, sports, friends, and yes, a girlfriend. <laughs> what I, and what I mature as I get older. <laughs> At the moment, I'm just trying to concentrate on the important things in life, like having fun, doing well at school, playing sport that I love, and just living life as it is. But I just think that mum's told me many times that if you have a dream, you have to follow it, and if you find roadblocks on the way, you have to try and get around to them. So I'm glad it's just commitment, not bravery. <laughs> and so that's really my story of how I was born.